where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. How would you like to be known as a devout, God-fearing person who gives generously to the poor and prays continually? If someone described a person to you in that way, you would automatically assume that person was saved, wouldn't you? But that's not necessarily true. In fact, I'm sure you've known some people who claim to be very spiritual, who gave money and volunteered for the homeless or even went to church regularly, but they didn't know the Lord. They might have been good people, but they didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. That was the case with today's Bible character, Cornelius. He lived in Caesarea, the Roman capital in Israel. The Bible says that he was a centurion, that is, a Roman soldier who was in charge of a hundred men. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, was even more specific. Cornelius was part of the Italian cohort. Now, in order to qualify as a centurion, he had to have proved himself as a courageous man, a leader that others would follow. He was in charge of the Roman soldiers in Caesarea, so this man was really important in his circles. Centurions served Caesar, so supposedly they would worship him and other Roman gods. But this man didn't. Cornelius had been stationed in Israel and had learned about the one and only true God. The way he's described, he had put away the multitude of Roman gods, embracing and worshiping the God of the Jews, and leading his family to do the same. He was a man of prayer, seeking God, but he did not yet know the Messiah. This Roman centurion, God gave the privilege of becoming the very first Gentile to be offered the gospel. You probably know the story. An angel appeared to him while he was praying and told him to send for Peter. Before Cornelius' servants met Peter, God made it clear to Peter what he should do. So against all Jewish customs, Peter accepted the invitation to be Cornelius' guest. Knowing Peter's message would be important, Cornelius had called together all of his relatives and close friends so they could hear too. When Cornelius told his story, Peter understood that God was opening the doors of salvation to the Gentiles. So he shared the gospel with Cornelius and his friends. They believed, and the Holy Spirit came upon them as proof that they'd been saved. The whole group was baptized. This was quite a momentous event. God had chosen a Gentile, and not just any Gentile, a hated Roman soldier. To the Jews, as devout as this man was, to even think of including him in God's family was preposterous. In fact, if Peter hadn't brought some of the Christian brothers with him to witness the Holy Spirit's dramatic conversion of Cornelius and his family, the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem may not have believed that this was even possible. But God chose Cornelius, of all people. As we look around us, We don't know who God might be calling. It might be that good person who's kind and generous, but is seeking for more than just good. Or it may be that outcast that you can't imagine ever coming to Christ. And like Peter, God may want to use you to share the gospel with them. We must be alert, watching for opportunities that God gives us to start conversations, plant seeds, and share with those whose hearts he has prepared. As always, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to share a treasure, support this ministry, or get Carla to speak at an event, please contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.